Who's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? A few months ago, I was offered an early version of the new Handsmaker D1 Ultra. This is a new dual fiber diode Galvo laser that is about to have its Kickstarter launch. In the D1 Ultra, Handsmaker combined a 20 watt diode with a 30 watt fiber laser, which puts it pretty much in the same class as the Xtool F1 Ultra and the Omtech Solus Duo. However, on paper at least, the first major difference between these machines lies in the price. Currently, the slightly lower powered F1 Ultra is just under 3600 and the equally powered Solus Duo is just under 37, while Handsmaker has set the D1 at $2,099 for the first 200 orders on Kickstarter. I got a pre-production model and it came with what you'd expect with a basic production version, including a touchscreen for an offline controller and a fan-boosted extraction hose setup. It had been well packed and arrived in pretty good condition. With the minor exception of the door latch which had fallen off but was easy enough to pop back on. Connecting the fume extraction hose was pretty simple. This is just a me issue, but the hose that came with the machine wasn't quite long enough for my shop, so I swapped the supplied hose with a longer one. The machine itself has connection ports for a rotating third axis, a conveyor belt assembly for batch processing, a foot pedal, and for a direct connection to an air cleaner. There's also a USB port for offline controlling. The supplied remote touchscreen is available for offline controlling from the USB, but it isn't needed if a computer is connected. Software downloading and installation is easy enough and I had no trouble getting the laptop to find the laser and connect. I've sped the video up, but I can tell you from clicking download to fully connected was about three minutes. Now the software is still in development, so not every feature was available at the time this was recorded, but Handsmaker is working to have this ready to coincide with the Kickstarter launch. The software is already pretty intuitive and has all the things you'd expect, like an image import, text, basic shapes, a drawing tool, a template library, a barring QR code generator, and the ability to link to an AI generator. There are also tools to manipulate and rotate objects. Changing plane processing looks to be pretty simple as well, with options for things like the rotary, the large-scale processing conveyor belt, and 3D processing. The device settings allow you to make some tweaks to the actual hardware functions like turning on a buzzer or the manual focus laser. The D1 also has an internal camera for precision engraving on objects, and here you can see the full 220 square millimeter engraving area from the machine's perspective. My only real Galvo laser experience is with the small X-Tool F1, which I honestly never use the autofocus on. When I did my first real test with the D1, I found the motor needed to do a reset before focusing. The laser rose to its maximum height before settling into a focused position. my first basic test, I just wanted to see what text would look like on a small piece of plywood. I imagine the materials library will grow considerably, but for my beta version there was already a few different metal, leather, and wood options. One thing I liked about the materials library is that they have a visual example of what presets will look like on your material. I reviewed all the settings that came out of the materials library before I sent the engraving to the machine to run. This video is at actual speed with the diode laser. While I can't really do a side-by-side -side test with the D1 Ultra's direct competition because I don't own either of those models, I can tell you that this laser is ridiculously fast compared to the gantry-style atom stack that I use for template cutting. Anyway, the laser did its thing and the extraction fan was more than enough to keep smoke from building up in the engraving area. Handsmaker is also making a fume scrubbing machine, but for my purposes, venting out the shop door is more than fine. So that worked pretty well. But next I really wanted to try out the fiber laser. In the software, I quickly set up a test with some arbitrary parameters just to see what would happen. Before clicking mark, I decided to do a preview just to see how my framing looked. This is at the default speed. Here's the framing at the max speed, and I can tell you in real life it looks like a lot more of a solid line than it does on camera. I closed up the doors and began the actual engraving. So this is an interesting example of how lasers affect different kinds of metals. The marking on this piece of aluminum was unremarkable. 
This test that I did the day before, but not while filming, was much, much deeper. I've never gotten engraving this deep, and I think it hit about one and a half millimeters before I shut the laser off. Now, just to make sure that I didn't somehow ruin this laser doing that super deep engraving, I tried it out on brass, and I was able to get really satisfying results. This was just a rough test using the settings in the materials library, but it definitely works for my needs. I know a lot of people like to use these kinds of machines to engrave slate coasters, and I had one lying around, so I decided to try that next. Engraving slate coasters isn't something I really do ever, so I was completely shooting from the hip on my settings. This was done on the diode side, and I had forgotten that something I was engraving earlier had been set to have 100 passes, so this made it to its third or fourth before I noticed and shut down the machine. It looked like I got a little bit of glass formation on some of the letters, but like I said, I'm not too experienced with this, and I think I probably had the settings way too high. Next I wanted to try out a leather patch, and for this I installed the included angle guides. After refreshing the background, I added some simple text to engrave into the patch. The patch itself was a sample that came with the machine, and it was nice that this was something that was actually already in the materials library. I don't do a lot of leather, but the settings seemed okay, and before I started this engraving I decided to check the framing. That looked good enough for this test, and I like having this kind of feature in a laser. This was kind of silly, but I forgot that I had that square that was just above the patch in the drawing area. I realized pretty quick though when the laser started. I immediately hit the escape key on my laptop to stop the laser, then I went back into the program, removed that box, and started my engraving over again. This time the engraving went well, but I was a little disappointed with the settings that I chose because I wanted the letters to be just a bit darker. I tweaked the power and speed and then ran the engraving again. This particular leather patch has a metallic undercoat, which is why the letters are gold. I gave it a quick wipe off with a damp paper towel, and as you can see, it came out pretty well. So one thing I've never really tried on any of the lasers I've used is acrylic cutting. This was a first for me. I actually tried this a couple times because I was really unsure about what kind of settings I would need to cut through the piece of supplied acrylic. Personally, I think a Galvo laser is really much more suited to engraving rather than cutting, and for cutting stuff like this, I think using a gantry style is really the right way to go. However, the diode side did just fine to get through this acrylic. It definitely cut through, and quite neatly. Out of curiosity, I decided to see how the acrylic would react to the fiber laser. It definitely cut through, but towards the end of the program, I could start to hear the acrylic snapping and popping. The fiber laser will definitely cut the acrylic, but I'd say that the diode laser, which is the one on top, is a lot cleaner of a cut. I've never really had a laser that could cut metal of any thickness, so I thought I'd try out some brass. It took a little while, but the D1 Ultra can in fact cut through half millimeter thick brass. I happened to have some half millimeter aluminum lying around, so I cut a little scrap of it and I tried that out too. It definitely worked, and actually it turned out that piece of aluminum was a little bit thicker than half millimeter. I had already had a really satisfactory test just engraving on a piece of mild steel, and after doing my brass and aluminum cutting test, I figured why not and gave it a try. I used the exact same settings that I had used with the piece of aluminum, and this actually cut through the steel with fewer passes. So in my testing, it became clear that this is a powerful and speedy machine. In the 10 days or so that I've been able to play with it, I've provided a lot of feedback to the company who have been very receptive and seem committed to making sure that the production version is the best it can possibly be. I look forward to seeing what my pre-production model will be able to do as the software capabilities are expanded. One thing I'm sure of is that I'll be using the Handsmaker D1 Ultra on many future projects.